A common way of plotting Fibonacci circles is to place the two points at major reversal areas, usually the beginning and end of a trend, such as the low and high here. And like Fibonacci arcs, it will commonly be said price approximates the curvature of these circles. And there may also be continuations and reversals upon contact with these circles. Of course, not all the circles will be useful, and it's also important to take into account other factors such as contact with major support ranges when deciding if a major reversal is developing upon contact with one or more circles. Like with Fibonacci arcs, price might just follow the approximate curvature of these circles and not necessarily make major reversals or continuations all the time. They may also give detail on the approximate time range price might be falling into a flat range prior to a more significant movement. It is a preferable bonus to see circles circle back to contact other major reversal areas, but it's not a necessary criteria. Unlike with Fibonacci retracements or extensions, the two points of Fibonacci circles should usually avoid placement with steep trends and swing points, such as with this case, because when the circle becomes too horizontal or vertical, it's better to use other tools such as Fibonacci retracements or Fibonacci time zones. Also, there's shorter term coverage with the circles, which are often too close together. So when using Fibonacci circles with this common method, it's better to choose two points that will result in a trend line quite close to 45 degrees. So it is possible to use this kind of method with sharper price movements, but usually even if there is a steep trend like this, there will be at least a minor horizontal range somewhere in between the two points, like with the more gradual movement near the beginning of the uptrend in this case. 